it's my great privilege to to give a small talk. It's, it may not be very big, small talk in the area of optical fiber sensors and their applications. So I'm basically an electrical engineer who later on moved into optics and now I am in, back in engineering. So my based on my expertise and knowledge in optical sensing, my focus will be on application of lasers or light in engineering. So I have been uh, looking at the different presentations in the series and most of them were on the physics side. I thought I will twist everything to application or I will look from engineer's perspective for this presentation. So these are some of the, uh, the, the my presentation will include some of the basics associated with optical fiber sensors and then I will move on to some of the research related to optical fiber sensing which most of which we have been doing in RGU. Now again, uh, Kerala University and most of the students there might know me because I am a regular visitor there. Uh, at least every two years, I give a talk in uh, the same department. So it's, it's a great privilege to speak to people in Kerala University and especially in this department. Now, uh, overview of my talk. So I have uh, probably 45 to 50 minutes presentation and I will start with some introduction and then I move on to fiber optics or optical fibers. Then I will touch some basics around sensing and monitoring using optical fibers. Then I will touch some of the important applications or emerging applications in the medical security and oil and gas applications. Even though oil and gas, oh, sorry, uh, optical fibers have applications in many, very many areas, I will be restricting, restricting to these three. Then, so I'm speaking at the moment from uh, Scotland and that is somewhere here. So I'm, uh, this, this is, UK map and London, you might know, it's most of you might know this is here, but I am again North and this is Aberdeen. This is the oil capital of Europe. So we have a lot of oil fields around here and Aberdeen is a hub for all the supplies here. So most of our research is in and around oil and gas. Again, Scotland is this area and capitalist Edinburgh. And we I am based in North Sea part here. It's a, it's a part of North Sea or side of North Sea. Now, my new university campus is this one. It's near a Garthdi River and it's situated uh, in a nice landscape. And this is the new building for including, uh, which includes School of Engineering. And this is called Sir Ian Wood Building, which was opened four years back. So most of our activities are around in this building. And RGU is uh, one of the uh, modern universities focusing on applied areas and science, uh, mostly on applied areas, not on the fundamental. So again, I am in School of Engineering and I, my labs and research activities are around somewhere here. And again, we have, as a university, we have undergraduate, postgraduate, and research programs. So most of my activities are around postgraduate and research activities. And we have, I think, around 20,000 students and uh, in different programs. And luckily, or uh, recently, we have been awarded the University of the Year from the Times and Sunday Times University Guide. So that's very recently we have got this award. So with this basic introduction on university, I'll move on to the technical side. So optical fibers. Optical fibers are not very new to people now. This was proposed 
early in 1966 as a glass waveguide. Later on, it was it is known as or it was known as optical fibers. And along with the inventions or developments in laser, uh, both waveguides and laser led to the development of many applications in optics and optoelectronics. So initially, first glass waveguide was highly lossy waveguide, but later on, due to the huge investment, research investment and research efforts, which may probably during late 80s and early 90s led to the development of low loss glass waveguides, which led to the development of optical communication based on optical fibers and revolution, what you see now. Through, with the backbone of optical fibers, now we have, we can stream live telecasts throughout the world, including uh, this webinar. So backbone of this communication is optical fiber. Now, this was happening in the, happening because of huge investment in communication area. But as an offshoot of that, we got very low loss optical fibers. And this led to the development of optical sensors based on optical fibers. So now we have very, very good or low loss glass and polymer fibers for various applications around sensing or monitoring. And these optical fiber based sensors can be used for real time sensing and monitoring in various applications. There are a multitude of applications based on, on optical fibers. So let me touch our own optical sensor. Probably you might know one of the basic sensors on the human body is eye. This is an optical sensor which focuses light onto the retina and from the retina through a series of micro channels or micro fibers, signals will be transmitted to the brain to create image or signal of signal to the brain. So back of this optical sensor, human sensor is a set of fibers or nerve fibers. And they are around few microns in diameter. Similarly, a typical optical fiber has few hundreds microns in diameter. You can see the typical size of an optical fiber, which is flexible and lightweight. And this tiny fiber can be used for sensing and monitoring application. Or we will see how to use this tiny fiber for utilizing in sensing and monitoring. So co main parts of a typical fiber is are shown here. So main parts of this fiber are core and cladding. These are for the mechanical and the protection purposes. The main light guiding part is core and is subtended or supported inside a low refractive index cladding. So this is a typical step index fiber and this will be supported by optical radiation or light passing through the fiber. And wavelength associated with the fiber or, or optical radiation is from probably 0.4 microns to 0.7 micron. And if you see here, this is the full electromagnetic wave spectrum. So light is part of this large electromagnetic spectrum ranging from radio waves to gamma waves. So this is the high frequency radiation and this is the low frequency radiation. So in terms of its wavelength, if we start looking, so radio waves are probably huge, as big as huge buildings, while visible light is around 0.5 micron 
and it's size of a protozoa. Now you can, one of the main things or one of the important things what people are talking about is the COVID-19 virus. So COVID-19 virus in relation to our visible light here. So typically COVID-19 virus, which is creating havoc all over the world has size of probably from 50 nanometers to 200 nanometer size. That's the range. So in relation to our visible light, which is here, the size of the virus is somewhere here. So that is around 200 nanometers. This is around 500 nanometers. And so this is much, uh, and size of the virus is much smaller than the size of this optical radiation. And this optical radiation is the main part of communication in optical fibers. So these are the two, this is one of the main fibers used for optical fiber sensing and communication. So basically this, as I said earlier, optical fiber has a core and a cladding out, supported outside. So in a glass fiber, this is a silica glass core and supported by a slightly lower refractive index cladding. So this high refractive index core and low in refractive index cladding supports total internal reflection at this interface. This total internal reflection phenomena is the core part for transmission of light through the optical fibers. Because this is a very low loss or 100% efficient reflection, we can transmit light for a long, long distance. And through this total internal reflection phenomena, we can transmit signals for probably kilometers and kilometers of length. And from the structural perspective, you have core and cladding, core with high refractive index and cladding with slightly lower refractive index material. And if you look at the cross section of this step index fiber, this has probably around 60 to 100 micron diameter as core and cladding around 125 and above. And this size is not more, size fiber is normally termed as multimodal fiber because it supports multimodal transmission and transmission of light in the fiber. While when the diameter of the core reduces to probably below 10 micron, this becomes as a step index single mode fiber. And that is widely used for communication purposes. And this multi-mode as well as step or single mode fibers can be used for optical fiber sensing applications. If we are looking for larger light transmission, we prefer to go for multi-mode. And if we are looking for smaller light transmission, we go for single mode fibers. Again, there are different structures for optical fibers based on the refractive index gradient. But I'm not going into the details at the moment. And a new type of or recent development in optical fibers is one of, one of the recent developments is photonic crystal fibers, or they are also called as holy fiber or microstructured fibers. And this one of the this is this is the typical step index fiber, and these are the photonic crystal fibers. And as you can see here, or the name supports. These fibers are having plenty of tiny holes throughout the length of the fiber. So these hundred or sorry, few micron diameter holes will support the light guidance through the fiber. And like a step index fiber here, you have a core glass region and a set of micron sized holes. And based on these structures, 
you have solid core where the middle part is solid glass or hollow core where the middle part is hollow which is which carries air so based on structure you have two types of pcfs one is solid core and another one is hollow core in light guidance in these two are slightly different this follows to, uh, modified total internal reflection principle while this one follows the photonic band gap principle so these are the recent developments in optical fibers and again these two fibers they have their own advantages and can be used for applications in sensing and monitoring now let's look at the basic principle of optical sensing if you look at any sensor there is a source there's a detector and in between comes the sensor so light source sends some signal to the sensor and sensor modulates or changes the light based on the measurement and the detector detects the changes in the optical or light optical signal so that's the basic working principle behind a sensor so in the case of optical fiber sensing the light will be transmitted through the optical fiber and reaches the detector so sensor sits sits in between so sensor is taking the signal from the environment and modulates the light passing through the fiber but based on different types of light sources we have set of different light sources now in this case i have picked up lasers so pulsed lasers very high power pulse lasers and continuous wave lasers type lasers or now semiconductor which are very quite cheap so we have a set of light sources which can be used for sensing and on the other side we have a set of detectors so these are photomultiplier tubes which are more expensive and but highly sensitive and on the other side we have cheaper sensors called silicon photodiodes and photodiodes uh, are quite cheap compared to photomultiplier tube but they might be slightly lower in sensitivity and now we have ccd based sensors as well so based on the combination of any of the sources and detectors and the sensing principle we can have various types of sensing modalities so basically what happens here is this sensor or will change any light passing through this optical fiber and the light will carry the signal corresponding to what we are measuring in this region it can be either intensity phase polarization wavelength or spectra so the sensor or the environment modifies one of these parameters and the detector monitors that change in other words these are the typical basic principles of light that can be or measurement principles based on light which we can use in optical fibers so the change in amplitude of the light passing through or change in phase of the light passing through the fiber or polarization on other other side on the frequency change in frequency on the wavelength domain you can see change in amplitude of the particular wavelength band or change in wavelength spectrum based on these six principles we can develop a series of sensors but all the optical sensors are boiling down to one of these basic principles or changes in measurements so what are the advantages of sensing based on optical fibers so one of the competitors for optical fibers is our traditional metallic wires so they use 
electrons as transmitters or conductors of signals. In optical fibers, it is using photons. And based on the structure, optical fibers have lots of advantages compared to traditional metallic cables. So one is remote operation is possible because we have long uh, we got optical fibers with long or low trans transmission losses are possible. And one of the main advantages with optical fibers, because it's based on dielectric material, glass, it's non-electrical. That's one of the main advantages compared to electrical sensors, electrical based sensors. And again, it is immune to electromagnetic interferences. See, this is based on this advantage. There are very many applications around optical fibers. Again, another advantage is electrical isolation. So it's, this can be used in uh, fluid or water environment because in electrical sensors, one of the problems is shifting of the grounds that might affect the signal. So this is optical fibers are based on transmission of light and it is isolated from any changes in electrical ground. Then as I said, low attenuation, results in transmission of signal for a longer distance. Optical fibers are probably a few microns in diameter, so they are compact and lightweight. In compared to copper wires, they are very, very light. Another advantage for corrosive environment, sensing uh, sensors for corrosive materials or environment. Since glass is not Coro uh, corrosive, this is one of the major advantages based on that dielectric material constitute material. And again, transmission of data, data is secure compared to metallic transmission. And again, in, in nuclear radiation, it is resistant to ionizing radiation, can be used in nuclear industry, monitoring nuclear radiation. Again, optical fiber can be used for point type sensing and distributed sensing. And based on multiplexing phenomena or multiplexing principle using time domain or wavelength domain, we can integrate multiple sensors along the same optical fiber. And this provides a wide, wide dynamic range for sensing. As I said, this is cor corrosion less. So based on that, we can use this optical fiber for harsh environment. And it can, since this is based on glass, which has a melting point of around 600 and above based on uh, constituents of the material glass, it can be used for high temperature monitoring or it can be used in harsh environment. And again, it glass is relatively explosion proof. So these are the main advantages of optical fibers that can be taken advantage of while designing optical fiber sensors. Now let's look at what are the typical fiber optic sensors. Traditionally, as I said earlier, optical sensing is based on intensity variation. So if you have two optical fibers, light coming from one fiber can be coupled to the other fiber. And variation in intensity, reflection or transmission can be a function of distance between these two fibers. So as the distance varies, the light coupled into the second fiber varies. So you can correlate distance as or intensity as a function of distance. And this is widely used for engineering applications. And this is one of the simplest optical sensing applications for displacement measurement, micro displacements. So again, this is based on intensity measurement. The same principle is explained here, where light is coupled from one fiber to the other fiber as the disk and the Output is monitored, 
using a detector on this side. As the distance between the fiber increases, light coupled to the fiber changes or decreases. So this is used for linear displacement. While this principle can be used for lateral displacement. So you have a fiber coupling light to these two fibers and you have two detectors. And as this fiber moves up or down, intensity that is getting coupled onto these two fibers will be changing and that will result in different signals here. And that can be correlated to lateral displacement of this fiber. Again, using micro bending principle, you have in an optical fiber, you have core and a cladding outside. And if we bend the fiber, this will result in loss of light from core to cladding. And based on that principle, if we use teeth like this, and this can, in a configuration like this, and if you move or press the fiber in from the two direction, that will result in micro bending and loss of light through the core. And that can be correlated to displacement of three these two teeth. So simple or basic configurations for optical fiber sensing or displacement can be through this transmission of light or reflection of light, or they are all based on intensity variation. Now let's just look at another way based on interferometric principle. Basically, you must have studied Michelson interferometer. Basic Michelson interferometer has a light source here and two mirrors, mirrors and a screen or a detector here and there's a beam splitter. So light coming from here will be reflected by the beam splitter, goes up and comes back and reaches the screen. While the next path goes here and comes back and images are visible on the screen. So these two reflected light beams interfere, creating a nice, beautiful interference pattern like this one. Using a laser, it's very easy to make interference fringes, but it's slightly difficult with a white light source, but it's not impossible. So these two paths are important for, important for Michelson interferometer and creating this fringe. And if we move or make a small displacement or change a refractive index in this path, this will result in shifting of the fringe, resulting or showing the effect of refractive index change or path length. The so same Michelson principle can be extended to optical fiber like this. Here you have a light source and a splitter, and there are two optical fibers going like this, one and two. These form these two paths. You have two mirrors. And this is your sensor or transducer sitting in this part. And reflected light will be coupled to the detector here. So this forms an optical fiber-based configuration of Michelson interferometer. And any changes in this path will result in change in intensity or fridge pattern. So that can be correlated to sensing what, or the measurement. And based on different configuration, we have Michael's Max Center Interferometer. This is Michael's Interferometer, which is an extension of this basic one. Now, another one is Max Center Interferometer, where we have light passing through the two fibers. One is the reference, and this is the sensing arm. And the light will be coupled, generating interference fringe in the detector. Or the detector measures the intensity variation at this point. And based on another principle, or same principle, in a different configuration, is called fabric parallel. So you have a small cavity working as a fabric parallel, and reflected intensity depends on displacement of one of these mirrors. So you have one face here, reflecting face here, and second reflecting face here. 
if there are tiny displacements of around this mirror, this will result in intensity variation at the reflected side. So based on different configurations, we can have different interferometric based sensing of sensing using optical fibers. Now, another possibility is using polarization. So light is normally randomly polarized. And when the light is electric field is oscillating in all the directions, when you pass that light through a polarizing filter, a certain polarization will be passing through. And this can be used to monitor what is happening to the environment or the you can use this for or polarized light can be used to monitor changes in the environment. So in this case, a light source and randomly polarized light source. Now the light is polarized using a polarizer passing through the optical fiber. And this is the polarizer and using an analyzer, we can study the change in polarization or the intensity variation at this point. So if the optical fiber is a polarization preserving fiber, any stress on the fiber can result in change in its polarization. And that polarization will change in light passing through this analyzer and resulting in change in intensity. So this can be used for monitoring stress in the fiber. Again, next one is on spectroscopic principle. In, this is a broad spectrum of light passing through the optical fiber and sensors can be engraved in the optical fiber. And based on the sense, sensing structure, transmitted or reflected light, signal can change or can be created and any change in sensing area will result in changing change in the transmitted light or reflected light. So this is based on spectrum of light. So there are a variety of principles we can use for sensing based on optical fibers. Again, optical fiber sensors can be classified or broadly classified into two categories. One is intrinsic, intrinsic sensors and second one is extrinsic sensors. So in intrinsic sensors, the optical fiber itself is working as the sensor. So light passing through the fiber is getting modulated because fiber itself is working as a sensor and is changing the properties of the light and that can be detected here. While on the other side, there is an additional medium which is transferring or creating a modulation in light corresponding to change in the measure rank or environment. So here in intrinsic sensing, environment is creating a change directly on the fiber and resulting in change in light properties. While in the extrinsic environment or environmental signal is creating a change in optical fiber or light through an additional member or param structure. So that is extrinsic. And there can be different variants integrating these two principles. Now based on topology, so sensing can be classified, optical fiber sensing can be classified into three categories. So that's based on its topology. One is, and the basic one is based on single point sensor, where you have a small part of the fiber which is used as a sensor. In the second category, it's a multi-point where there are many sensors integrated along the path of the optical fiber. So if this black line is the optical fiber, there are many sensors integrated into the fiber working or sensing different parameters, it can be different parameter or same parameter at different positions. So this is called multi-point or 
quasi-distributed sensing. So based on application, you can go for single point or quasi-type. An extended one of this, this one is distributed sensing, where the whole fiber is working as a sensor. So in this case, whole fiber is working as a sensor and is continuously providing signal or reflected signal for measuring. The fiber itself is working as the sensor. So these are the three configurations based on topology. We'll look into this one in detail. And distributed sensing is based on scattering. So in optical fiber, you or I'll take this example. When you send a light through a cuvette, which is containing some sample, light can be reflected, that can be transmitted, and can create scattering. So typically in optical fibers, there are tiny molecules of silica or particles. And changes in particles or molecules will result in scattering or changes in scattering. So this, these are the scattering particles that this they will result and they will result in scattering of the light in different directions. And one of the important contributions is scattering from the ramens or due to ramen scattering. These tiny particles in the fiber so if I look at the optical fiber like this, light pulse, this is a green light pulse passing through from the laser will result in scattering or lead to scattering from this changes in tiny refractive index or scattering from these molecules. Throughout the fiber, light will be scattered and the scattered light can be collected using this detector. And typically, you have possibly three types of signal. One is having the same wavelength as the excited, and two, based on slightly different wavelengths. So in based on Raman, in the light incident here, it results in scattering, and you can see that is inside the core part of the fiber. And based on that, you have Rayleigh scattering, which is same frequency or wavelength as incident, and two shifted wavelengths based on Raman. So you have stocks and anti-stock signal coming from the scattering. And typically, Raman's signal is quite weak compared to fluorescence or reflection. And <clears throat> it needs high power laser, a laser source to create or detect. And as I said earlier, Raman spectra has two peaks, anti-stoke and stoke. While the stoke is not sensitive to temperature, anti-stoke is sensitive to temperature. So this can be used for monitoring temperature variations along the length of the fiber. So basic principle can be explained this, but I'm not going into the details at the moment. So you have anti-stock, which is temperature sensitive, and it's a function, the, a, a change in intensity of this anti-stock line can be correlated to temperature variation. And in this case, this can work as a reference signal. So the ratio of these two can be used for monitoring temperature variations along the fiber of fiber. So in this case, you see optical fiber sending a light pulse and getting back the scattered, back scattered light. And these are the two Raman signals and anti-stop is a function of temperature or amplitude of anti-stop line is a function of temperature. And that can be related to this equation where and ratio of 
anti-stock to stock line is an exponential function and it's related to temperature now. And temperature variation will result in the reflected intensity. So based on that, you can see this is the exponential variation of the reflected intensity as a function of temperature or the reflectivity. So reflected intensity, common reflected intensity of the Raman signal varies or reduces as a function of temperature. This is the theoretical modeling. One of my students, postgraduate students, she has been looking into using glass for or developing different type of glasses for sensitive measurement of temperature. So she was studying the sensitivity and she tried to use Raman spectrometer exciting at 785 nanometers and changing the glass temperatures. So you can see for lower temperature, signal strength is higher. As the temperature increases, signal goes weaker. So this follows similar trend. And this can be used for temperature monitoring using optical fibers. So in addition to Raman scattering, there can be Brillouin scattering, which is again temperature sensitive. Again, Rayleigh scattering, backscattered light, can be used for, for acoustic signal monitoring. So Raman scattering can be used for temperature monitoring. And Brillouin, which is resulting from the phonon vibrations, that can be used for monitoring temperature or strain. So these are the three basic principles on which distributed sensing of sensing using optical fibers work. So you can see the long optical fiber, as the light propagates from one end to other end, based on impurities or non-uniformities in the fiber, there will be a reflected spectrum in time domain, tax cut, cut light. And that can be correlated to the distance if the refractive index of the core is known. So you can see continuously decreasing Rayleigh scattering, that's the main due to the loss of the fiber and impurities resulting in a small peaks like this and reflection due to splicing. So OTDR, optical time domain reflectometers can be used for monitoring the backscattered light and predicting what is happening along the fiber. So this is, these are the basic principles that can be used for distributor sensing using optical fiber. And here, and here you can see, it can be distributed sensing can be used for monitoring temperature along the oil pipeline. Here you can see the oil pipeline and optical fiber is attached to it. And there will be detector and late source here sending optical pulses and detecting the backscattered light. And if you try to monitor, this can be as long as 30 kilometers, 50 kilometers. You can see due to the temperature variation or temperature changes, there will be shift resulting in the backscattered light. And this can be correlated to a temperature change specific to these regions. So that's how we use distributor sensing and Raman signals. Again, distributor sensing and point type sensing can be integrated. So we were looking into this in our research here. So same fiber can be used for distributor sensing and integrating additional sensors along the fiber. We can do multi parameter sensing. So in this case, you can just FPGs integrated in the fiber monitoring temperature, strain, or pH for multi parameter sensing. And this was in relation to oil and gas sensing. So let's look at one of the sensors based on fiber brag rating. And one of the common 
census is based on fiber bracket principle. A small grating can be inscribed in the core part of this fiber, and grating is a slight change in refractive index in this region. A slight modulation of the refractive index results in reflection of certain wavelength in the back uh, reflected signal or this will result in a if you use a broad light source a small band of light will be reflected back and that depends on the structure of this grating or distance between the gratings and the refractive index if anything is changing in this region that will result in shift of the reflected spectrum and that can be used for monitoring or can be used for sensing strain or temperature around this region so if we send a signal you can get a reflected signal like this based on the structure of this grating and if we apply a strain this peak might shift from here to here so there are two structure uh, gratings one reflecting at this wavelength and one reflecting at this wavelength and because of the strain that might shift from here to here indicating something is changing around this and <clears throat> change in strain can be correlated to shifting the refracted spectrum and normally it's a linear function how do we write gratings in optical fiber one of the <clears throat> simplest principle is to use create or create a, an interference fringe interference pattern using two uv lights so low wave, wavelength uv light radiation can be used to inscribe or create fringe pattern and that can be used for writing grating in the fiber you can see here it can be used for monitoring tensile or compressive strain in the fiber again based on temperature coefficient of expansion of the glass we can monitor even temperature changes in this region and some of my students undergraduate students have been working on using fpgs for monitoring crane or can we use can we use optical fibers fiber sensors based on fpg for structural monitoring so they tried a cantilever type operation and they attached fpg on top one fpg at the bottom and try to understand what is happening to the signal so in principle if we attach we apply a force here top part will be going through tensile stress while the bottom part will be going to, through compressive stress so they they attach a one sensor on top and one set fpg at the bottom and signals were monitored using an optical spectrum analyzer as a as the uh, displacement was increasing you can see this side was going through tensile stress or strain and the wavelength was increasing while the bottom fpg was going down in this particular paper is a student publication again they were trying to identify where to put the sensor to get maximum signal now based on this optical fibers can be used or have been used for very many applications in mechanical chemical biological applications like typical applications in mechanical domain can be pressure monitoring force monitoring temperature monitoring flow vibration and velocity and various measurements can be monitored using optical fiber sensors again by configuring optical fiber appropriately we can monitor chemical species 
pH variation, liquid level, and humidity. And again, this can be used in radiation monitoring. Now, this, so there are very many applications for optical fibers. Now, I'll move on to some of the areas which we have been working in here. So I'll be touching basically some medical applications, security applications, and applications related to energy. So, as you know, every day there are very or large numbers of medical surgeries are being carried out in terms of uh, carried out all over the world. It might be in millions. So based on the complexity of the surgical process, uh, typically you might get surgeons or staff of around 10 to 15 and each surgery can take probably 10 minutes to few hours, tens of hours based on complexity. You can see many people are around this surgical table. And here, if you look at the surgery is mainly based on the surgeon here. So surgeon takes his experience, knowledge and skills which he learned through his training process to do a precise surgical operation or surgery. Again, he uses his hands as tools. In addition to scalpel, his hands are the workforce for carrying out this surgical operation. So one is the knowledge, skill, and experience he has got, and second is his hand. So these are the two things important for surg surgery. And nowadays, things are changing, or technological advances are happening in robotics as well as artificial, artificial intelligence. So these two can be used for surgical application, applications or surgeries in future. So surgeries are changing from manual to automated surgeries. So robot will take care of the hand movement while artificial intelligence will take care of surgeon. So from a large surgical team, eventually surgery will be carried out with one or two people on around the surgical table. And most of the mechanical work around the surgery will be carried out through the robots or robotic hands. So this hand, robotic hand, replaces surgeon's hand. And as you know, surgeon's hand has lots of sensors. So skin is one of the sensors. It is sending continuous signal to the brain and it's monitoring what is happening around this region or it's controlled. So for a mechanical system like this, or hand of a robot, we need many sensors. It can be a sensor for monitoring force, strain, torque, position, so many parameters. So we need multi-parameter sensors for this robotic hand. Can we use optical fibers for sensing around this? Now, again, most of the surgeries are image guided. So using imaging modalities, in addition to robotic, uh, robots and artificial intelligence, imaging is used for guiding or carrying out the process, surgical process. So one of the important or one of the emerging applications for imaging is through magnetic resonance imaging or surgery can be carried out using magnetic resonance principle or in presence of MRI scanners. 
and MRI scanners are widely used for soft tissue monitoring. Or they have very good contrast for soft tissues. And surgeries, especially for the brain and complex areas, now surgery will be carried out in the presence of MRI sensors or MRI-based imaging. The typical MRI imaging system has a huge magnetic coil, which has probably a magnetic field of 1.23. Nowadays, we have 7 Tesla or 10 Tesla. As the Tesla or magnetic field increases, resolution of the image can be enhanced. So, but this is a huge magnet working on superconducting principle, and this will create additional challenge for sensing and monitoring. So if you are using any electrical cables for monitoring, it may not be possible to get signal through this because of interference of magnetic field with the sensor. So in that case, optical sensors have advantages because they are based on dielectric materials. So optical fiber sensors can be used in conjunction with this huge magnetic field to monitor or carry out surge, surgery with the help of or in presence of MRI. And optical fibers are very small. And typically, uh, because of the complexity, surgery will be in here or imaging might be here, but operation or monitoring has to be in a different room. So for typical case, this can be one room and this can be another room where the monitoring is taking place. This is where surgery you can have multiple optical fiber based sensors around the surgical area and can have very many different configurations for sensing in and around the needle or the catheter associated with the surgery. So you can integrate tiny optical fibers fiber-based sensors inside the catheter. In this case, you can see three fiber fibers and going through the long needle. So we were working, but we want multiple sensors and we need to monitor multiple parameters using optical fibers. We were looking to integrate optical fiber based sensing. So, can we use fluorescence based sensing? Or, this is a rhodamine dye which has excitation here and emission around here. You can excite between 532, emitting around 560 or 570. And this dye can be doped in a polymer fiber or in a polymer and we can draw a simple fiber and this was a collaborative work between Cochin University and us and again Kerala University was also involved in this project so where we developed a hollow fiber a polymer hollow fiber and this was used for monitoring temperature so you can see the light passing through the fiber this is the excitation peak and this is the emission peak. And this is the typical situation where we have the control room away from the imaging system, MRI system. And you can see the phantom here, optical fiber running from the MRI system to the control room here. So this is the optical fiber. This can be, this was around 10 meters away from the MRI system. And these are in different rooms. And there we have the spectrometer and laser source controlled by a PC. And we try to monitor the temperature in presence of MRI system. And the, the phantom was having the sensor here, and it was a water bath. Phantom mass. And the temperature of the water bath was varying as a function of time. So we try to monitor the temperature in presence of MRI. And this is an MRI image. And as the temperature decreases, intensity 
of the fluorescent light started decreasing. So this shows that fluorescent-based principle of optical fiber-based sensing can be used in presence of MRI system. Now, as I said earlier, we need to monitor very many parameters when this imaging or surgery is taking place. We used FPG along with the same measurement. So we integrated or simulated a claustrophobic effect, or we started monitoring breathing pattern using FPG. And that's very important because some people have the claustrophobic uh, effect as they go into the small hole here, their heart rate might be changing. So that was monitored using FPG based sensor. And you can see the signal coming from the FPG. And in this particular case, it was around 21 breath per minute. Again, we monitored heart rate as well. And heart rate, FPG based heart rate monitoring, and we were getting around 1.24 hertz, so 74 heartbeats per minute. So we can monitor multi parameter, we can carry out multi parameter sensing in presence of this huge magnetic field using optical fiber. So multiple optical fiber or FPGs were integrated inside the fiber, and we were monitoring multi-parameter or implementing multi-parameter sensing. And each sensor represents different parameter we are monitoring. Now we are trying to extend the same thing using microstructured fiber and this project is ongoing. Oh, this time. Now another area what we were looking into is border control and security challenges. So you might be, must have seen, till the COVID-19 happened, international travel numbers were skyrocketing, they were increasing for the last 10 years. And this was creating a lot of illegal migration and terrorism related activities around the world. And this is through counterfeit uh, documentation of passports or visa cards. So we were thinking, can we in use or can we enhance the security of these documents using optical techniques? There are very many techniques, including biometric codings, RF codings, or RF IDs integrated into the fiber, into the data page of the passport. Now we were thinking, can we use any optical techniques and integrate that or a technique to enhance the security of this passport? And because of the computer revolution, most of the optical techniques are not very great because they can be easily reproduced. So we started looking into fluorescence-based waveguides. So waveguides that can we integrate waveguides into these passports to enhance the security of the passport. So simple system can have a light source or a simple detection system can have a light source and a detector which can be controlled using a PC. And the passport can go through this validation system. So we were trying to integrate an optical fiber inside the data page. So this was a rare earth doped fiber. We, it was a size of probably 25 micron or 30 micron. You can see it's the cross section of the fiber. It's an SEM image. And this is the surface and the cross section. Around 25 micron fiber, which the glass fiber doped with a rare earth element called terbium. And terbium has strong emission if we illuminate with UV light. This was emitting a green emission, and this is a strong and sharp emission. And that is a that can be used as a security feature inside 
the passport or data page. You can see this is the uh, this is the typical data page inside which we integrated the optical fiber. And optical fiber is not clearly visible here. You can see this is a tiny reflection here. But if you illuminate under the UV light, it's very clear. It's emitting green line. And this can be an additional security feature in addition to other security features like RFID or biodata. Now, can we enhance the security by adding spectral barcodes? So we use another rare earth element called dysprosium, which has different emission. So we characterized using Edinburgh spectrometers, and this is the excitation and emission pattern from dysprosium doped into the glass fiber. And we integrated these two terbium as well as dysprosium as two fibers very close to each other. Then we got a security pattern which is represented here. So this is the spectrometer, this is the light source, and this is the passport pitch. If we keep passport inside, we can get a spectrum like this in the detector. So this is a spectral barcode which can be based on this dopants. Again, by doping different rare earth elements, we can enhance the security and create multiple barcodes to enhance the passport. Again, this be extended by adding the lifetime discrimination. So fluorescent lifetime is an additional security feature in addition to this spectral feature. So for typically for terbium, the fluorescent lifetime was around 2.26 milliseconds. And this depends on the rare earth element as well as the glass composition. While for <clears throat> dysprosium, it was 744 microseconds. So these two can add as additional security feature for the passports. We are still working on this project. Now, another possibility is again security field where can we use, or one of the challenges here is detection of explosive vapors. Explosive, normally when they are carried out in suitcase or bags and uh, aircraft, there might be slight vaporization, small vapors, trace vapors might be coming out from these chemicals. Typically, TATP can give small vapors, a small concentration of vapors, and can we detect using our normal detection systems. Because of its own inherent problems, like chrome, uh, absence of chromophoric groups, some of the current trace detectors cannot detect these type of trace vapors. So we were, and uh, other possibilities use dogs hand. So these are very complex operations. So we were looking into detecting this chemical vapors through Raman scattering. So Raman scattering provides a nice molecular ring. It's a uh, molecular fingerprinting approach. Based on that, we can identify the chemicals in the vapor. But problem with Raman scattering is it's very, very less sensitive or it requires very strong laser power to detect the signal. Especially if it's a trace vapor, it's very, very difficult to detect uh, these gas vapors. So we were trying to integrate Raman, sig uh, Raman spectroscopy along with PCF, holoc or PCF, to enhance the sensitivity. Currently, this project is ongoing. So here, idea is to uh, use the molecular fingerprints of these uh, vapors using Raman 
spectrum, spectroscopy, and use photonic crystal fibers, which can increase the electric field pattern or distribution inside the hollow core fiber. So as I said earlier, one of the typical or recent developments is in optical fibers is hollow core PCF, where the central part is a hollow and the sample can and the light can go through this hollow part. So the laser can come through this hollow part and we can tune the amplitude distribution or intensity of this by, by restructuring these air holes here or by varying the diameter and pitch of these holes we can enhance the electric field pattern inside and resulting in larger interaction cross section for the ramen or the laser with the molecules or vapors so here you have air and vapors can go through this air gap and where the if we can tightly enhance or we can focus the light inside this part or enhance the electric field, this can result in stronger Raman signal. So this, in principle, the hollow part works, this hollow part of this fiber works as absorption cell. And by optimizing the structure here, we can enhance the electric field pattern inside the hollow part. So this will result in higher or stronger signal from the sample, sorry. So here you can see the electric field is increasing inside the core part, where the red shows very strong electric field and it's tapering towards the edges. So we can enhance the electric field inside. This might result in, or this will result in stronger Raman signal. And we can use a longer optical fiber to enhance or use the length of the fiber to enhance the signal from the trace vapors. Again, this project is ongoing. And we tried, one of my PhD students, she was trying to model this behavior and she was trying to vary the pitch and diameter of the holes. And she found as we increase the diameter of the holes and pitch, electric field intensity is increasing as a function of wavelength. Again, the confinement loss is better if we go for larger pitch and diameter. I'll go slightly faster now. Again, she was trying to understand effective mode area, which might result in stronger signal. As we increase the diameter and pitch, effective mode area was increasing that can result in larger signal from the sample. And it's the same expanded here. You can see effective mode area for our laser around 785 nanometers was higher as a function of the wavelength. So our laser was somewhere here. So we should get more signal. Still, this project is ongoing. And Results will be coming up soon. More results. Now, the last application I want to discuss here is based on oil and gas applications. So, uh, this is the typical scene in the North Sea where we have ma very many oil uh, platforms and there are very complex operations happening on the platform as well as inside under the sea. And there is a great need for monitoring multi parameters or multiple parameters from these oil wells. So, we were looking into um, monitoring different parameters using optical fiber sensors. And this is a typical oil field. We have mainly this is FPSO and this is the bottom of the sea. So, you can have a platform and underneath, this is the typical oil well. And we need to monitor what is happening in this oil 
wells for efficient operation or continuous operation of these wells. And currently, and these are different views at the bottom of the sea. Now, this is like a small refinery at the bottom of the sea, controlling temperature, pressure, and flow rate, monitoring very many, and chemical composition of the fluid coming up. And typically, these, these systems are working under high temperature and high pressure conditions. And we need to use, so in this case, you can see as the, as we are going deeper and deeper inside the earth, the temperature and pressure is increasing. That is leading to high pressure and high temperature environment. That means our sensors should be able to withstand these high pressures and high temperatures. So currently, these are the typical pressures, 5,000 PSI and 150 degrees. But as the oil reserves are going down, we are going deeper and deeper, which is resulting in pressures of as high as 15,000 PSI and temperatures well above 300 degrees. So current sensors, electrical-based sensors are not convenient. So in that case, Optical fiber-based sensors are, have their own advantage. And in oil and gas applications, these are the typical areas we'll be, we have been working on. One is structural health monitoring of pipelines, then seismic sensing, downhole operation or downhole production process, and communication between the sensors and the control center. So one of the requirements was, as we go deeper and deeper, temperature and pressure is increasing, and we need to have multiple sensors integrated into the sensor. So we were trying to integrate FPG as well as FP configuration for multi-parameter sensing. Here you can see optical fibers integrated with FPG as well as FP encapsulated in this copper nickel configuration. And here we use silicon carbide diaphragm because of its optical properties as well as its strong mechanical properties. And we try to monitor using this configuration. Now the student was trying to do the modeling. This is the mechanical uh, part of it, of the diaphragm. And he was trying to understand effect of diaphragm thickness as a function of sensitivity to pressure. I'll go quite fast. So shift in is the sensitivity of Bragg wavelength as a function of temperature. So you can see it's linear function of temperature. Now another important area is distributor sensing. Whole fiber, as I said earlier, whole optical fiber can be used as a sensor, which can be integrated along with the casing of uh, this oil well. This is a typical oil well. And this fiber is very tiny and it can be integrated inside this oil well. And this can be as deep as, in this case, 8,000 feet. Nowadays, it's going deeper and deeper, so the length is increasing. And using distributor sensing, we can monitor temperature, pressure, and chemical inside this oil and gas wells. Typically, pulse laser will be sending light, and there'll be backscattered light coming back to the detector here. And that will be monitored as a function of time. Now this is the typical oil well head where you can see the optical fiber for monitoring temperature, distributed temperature sensing, and acoustic sensing integrated here. Fiber. And this is the cross section here. So this is uh, these are the this is the optical fiber. These are two optical fiber sensors attached to the tubing of the oil well. And 
as a function of distance. You can see as the length, what well, you can monitor temperature along the fiber. So this is for the temperature monitoring. As we go deeper into the well, temperature is increasing. Now for the oil operation or uh, extraction, higher extraction or enhanced oil recovery, there might be few injection of gases or fluids into the oil well. And it has to be controlled precisely to enhance the continuous operation of the oil production. So this can be monitored using optical uh, fibers. And so at different depths, you can see the temperature profile at different depths in different color codes. You can see the temperature variation as a function of time at different distances. So again, this is in the time scale. Oil, oil and gas engineers will be able to identify what is happening inside the oil wells based on the typical process can be gas ex ex exiting in the tubings or water exiting the tubing based on these typical patterns. And this is a typical dust, acoustic signal, distributed acoustic signal based on optical fibers detecting oil injection in the oil wells. So because of the time, I think I will quickly go to the end of this. So as a conclusion, we have seen optical fibers can be used in different configurations to monitor multi-parameter for various applications ranging from medical, security, and oil and gas. In newer versions of optical fiber based on, such as PCF, can enhance the application potential for these areas. Now, uh, not but the least, these are acknowledgements, and some of them are my group members, and some of them are collaborators, including Cochin University. And this is from Kerala University, Professor Mahadevan Pillai. And we have some students from Cochin University who came here for visiting us. Thank you for their contribution to this work. Again, this is Professor Andreas Mercer, who was part of our medical sensing application. Thank you very much.